So today in class, we're going to be talking about a new type of coordinate system called polar coordinates and polar curves, or functions in our new coordinate system for polar coordinates. So we're going to be thinking about a new way to think about how we can describe any point sort of in the xy plane. So let's remember where we're coming from. So if we talk about Cartesian coordinates, we're thinking in a very rectangular way. So if we're given some point like this in the xy plane in Cartesian coordinates, we basically measure a distance horizontally in x and a distance vertically in y to give us that point x comma y. So polar coordinates is a different way of thinking. Instead of thinking rectangularly, horizontal, and vertically, we're thinking about what if I sat at the origin and pointed in the direction of a new point? So for example, if we're in polar coordinates, we're still in the xy plane. And if we have this point in the xy plane, we can describe it through a new coordinate system called polar coordinates, such that we're basically pointing from the origin at the point. And the way in which we can describe this is that point is some distance r away from the origin, and it's at some angle theta. So as long as I give us a distance from the origin and an angle off of the x-axis, we can describe any point in that xy plane. And this is our new way of thinking sort of in this two-dimensional coordinates of we have a point, we can describe it by looking at that point, pointing, asking how far it's away, and at what angle it's off of the x-axis. So if we put these two ideas together, actually, we will see something strikingly familiar. So what I'm just going to do is overlay our idea of Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates on top of each other. So here is the same point we had before. And if we're describing this in Cartesian coordinates, again, we move over some distance x, we move up some vertical distance y to describe our point. Or if we're thinking in terms of our new polar coordinates, we look from the origin, point at the point at some distance r away at some angle theta. Now you might see where we're going here is our Cartesian and polar coordinates complement each other through what we know by right triangles. So for example, this point we could describe two different ways. We could of course describe it in the familiar Cartesian way where we have some x, y values, or we could describe this in our new polar coordinates ways where we're given some specific distance from the origin, our polar radius, at some angle theta off of the x axis. And what's nice is we can even go back and forth in how we translate these the ideas back and forth, just using what we know from Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates, through our right triangle identities. So for example, if we're looking at some of these values, we can know that notice that if we just take the cosine of that angle theta, that's literally just taking the cosine of our angle theta up above, we know cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is equal to x over r. In a similar way, we can write sine of our angle. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which would be our y over r. So we can actually start asking, how can we go back and forth between our Cartesian and polar or vice versa? And in fact, if we actually just go ahead and solve for x and y, we get that x is equal to r times cosine of theta. And we find that y is equal to r times sine of theta.
So we actually have one of our first set of translation equations, how if we have polar coordinates, we can go back to Cartesian. So maybe let's just make a note of this. Again, this would be saying I give you a uh, point in polar coordinates, and then we can just plug those values of r and theta in to get the corresponding x and y values. We can actually go the opposite way, though, Cartesian back to polar, and we're going to do this the same way using what we know based off of right triangles. So for example, based off of right triangles, we know that that polar radius r through Pythagorean theorem is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we can write that r squared is equal to this is equal to x squared plus y squared. Again, x and y are the values of that point in Cartesian coordinates. And then the other thing we can get is that we know that well the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So if I ask about theta itself, I could write tangent of theta is equal to opposite over or opposite over adjacent, which is y over x, which tells me that if we just use the arc tangent, we find that theta by itself is equal to the arc tangent of y over x. So we have this new way of thinking in terms of polar coordinates rather than rectangularly over a horizontal distance up vertically. I can now ask, what if I'm looking in a particular direction? Again, an angle off the x-axis, and we know the distance away. And we can go back and forth between these coordinate systems based off of right triangle ideas. So we'll be talking about a lot of this in class today, how can we move back and forth between coordinate systems, converting both points and curves in each of these different coordinate systems. We'll practice sketching these types of polar curves, as well as start being able to compute some calculus-related things, like the slope and a tangent line to a polar curve.